There are three main theories of banking, but what are they? And more importantly, which one is correct? First of all, we have the financial intermediation theory. This is currently the dominant theory of banking and states that banks are just financial intermediaries, i.e. they gather deposits and lend these deposits out. Okay, pretty basic, it makes sense. The financial intermediation theory has had a significant influence on economic policy in the post-war era, specifically the attitude that developing countries could be helped by international banks who could provide missing domestic savings through their lending in order to fund economic growth. This has resulted in a massive increase in foreign borrowing and indebtedness by developing countries since the Second World War, as planned, of course. So, actually, the lender banks borrowed the money from the developing countries, from their banks locally. It was all a big con. That's how you, they got indebted. Their assets and their resources were the collateral so that the foreign lenders, which is creating, uh, well, getting the local banks to <laughs> create the money, um, they got control over these developing countries. Next up, we have the fractional reserve theory. This was the dominant theory from around the 1920s until the 1960s. It also argues that banks are financial intermediaries, but collectively, the banking system creates money via the process of multiple deposit expansion. Okay, what does this mean? Well, it is based on the following idea. With a reserve of, say, 10%, every bank would lend 90% of any deposit, which would increase deposits with other banks, resulting in a multiple creation of deposits in the banking system. So the fractional reserve theory states that banks create money collectively, but not individually. According to the American economist Joseph Stiglitz, deposits increase by a factor of one over the reserve requirement. Okay, well at least we know that that theory is wrong. Finally, we get to credit creation theory. This was dominant until around the 1920s. And it is at odds with the other two theories by representing banks not as financial intermediaries, neither in aggregates nor individually. Instead, each bank is said to create credit and therefore create money out of nothing whenever it loans money or purchases assets. This means that banks do not need to first gather deposits or reserves in order to lend money. According to the Scottish economist Henry Dunning Macleod, Bankers, no doubt, do collect sums from a vast number of persons, but the peculiar essence of their business is not to lend that money to other persons, but on the basis of this bullion to create a vast superstructure of credit to multiply their promises to pay many times, these credits being payable on demand and performing all the functions of an equal amount of cash. The business of banking is not to lend money, but to create credit. So the credit creation theory differs from the fractional reserve theory, as one bank is able to create deposits. Now, you would expect many empirical tests of these theories to see which one is correct, right? Well, no. From the mid 19th century until 2014, there were no scientific empirical tests on this issue. The first empirical test was published in 2014 by Richard Werner, only the credit creation theory was consistent with the observed accounting records. Surprisingly, the credit creation theory does not feature in most contemporary economics, finance or banking textbooks. Think about this, since roughly the 1920s, there has been a movement from the accurate credit creation theory to the misleading, inconsistent and incorrect fraction reserve theory, to today's dominant yet completely implausible and blatantly wrong financial intermediation theory. And this is why economics is not a science. Fields such as mathematics and physics have high standards for rational truth. For obvious reasons, a mathematical proof is a mathematical proof. An experiment that matches with theory repeatedly is an experiment that matches with theory repeatedly. I, these fields strip away human emotion and present cold rational truth. The field of economics on the other hand, well, the field of economics has been corrupted and is essentially a propaganda tool for the banking cartel. Often in popular culture, we celebrate and glorify the gangsters. Think of movies like Goodfellas, The Godfather, Scarface, and more recently, the Netflix sensation Narcos. Perhaps it is time to start doing the same with the banking cartel, although perhaps any big name director who divulges the truth will be Stanley Kubrick.
the interesting thing is that the banking cartel, and when I say banking, I'm referring to commercial banking, are under attack from another cartel, a cartel set to become more powerful than ever before. Of course, I'm talking about the central banking cartel, and we get onto that in the next video.